بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you back to our Hajj presentation and today is the day of the 28th of Shaban, uh, Shaban 1444 years after the Hijrah or the migration of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which coincides with May 18th, 2023 Inshallah we are going to talk about since we finished the Tawaf Al Qudum, uh, we are going to talk about in general some of the innovations that are done during the Tawaf by many of the Muslims. Unfortunately, if you do not know these things, uh, many people might be tempted to follow these traditions from others, thinking that these are additional goodness that will bring in their Hajj or in their Umrah. So it is very important not only to be informed about the Sunnah or the Manasik of the Hajj from the Sunnah al Mutahara or the Purified Sunnah, but also to be aware of these innovations. So, uh, uh, you know, there should not be any uh, confusion or any doubt in the, how, uh, in the hearts about, uh, you know, performing or not performing these uh, 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 rituals that people very uh, enthusiastically follow. And unfortunately, many of the people who take others for Hajj, they literally teach these things years after years. And it is also very sad that we see many Hujjaj, many leaders who take people to the Hajj and they don't warn the people. I even heard that some of these uh, Hajj leaders that take their Hujjaj over there and then they say you're on your own. And one of this person, uh, I was told that he says that he's a person of Sunnah, but yet when he goes there, he says, I don't want to deal with the headache uh, and, uh, you know, their bid'ah. So I let them do whatever they want. I only take care of my hajj. And this is not the right approach, because if you are taking uh, the amana, the trust, uh, and they're giving you the trust, uh, and, and they're going with you and you are arranging their hajj, the most important thing is to teach them the manasik of the hajj and to make sure they don't do it. Now, if they don't listen to you, that's another issue. That's between them and Allah. But at least we should do our best to teach our brothers and sisters what's right and also what is wrong so that they can stay away from it. And please remember that the, the, the manasik of the hajj is very simple. The Prophet Sallallahu kept during the tawaf everything open for us in the sense that we can make dhikr, we can make we can recite Quran uh, uh, we can make our personal du'as but the problem is when people start uh, uh, prescribing specific wordings at a specific time this prescription only the Prophet ﷺ has the authority to prescribe from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when people start prescribing specific words at a specific time, at a specific way, say in a specific thing, a specific, uh, you know, number of time, this is what uh, constitutes to be the bid'ah or the innovation. Why I'm saying this? Because a lot of people, they say that the du'as that they're saying are good. Okay, yes, they are good. But they are saying it as a uh, practice, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a ibadah in the sense that uh, uh, for example, the Prophet some tells us uh, or showed us when we go from Rukn Yamani to the Black Stone Corner, we say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina So I, I, if I take a dua from the Quran, Rabbi ja'alni muqimi salah wa min And I say that you say this dua, you add it between Rukn Yamani and the Black Stone Corner. Or you say this seven times between Black Stone Corner and the Shami Corner. Then this type of addition or prescription will be a bidah. However, if I know this dua and I say it at any time 
رب رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي all these duas which are mentioned in the Quran I just say it as my dua and I don't prescribe it to anybody then this is not a bidah then it is not an innovation okay so let's inshallah uh, move on with regards to the innovations of the tawaf bathing before tawaf so now you are in the hotel and you want to take a shower before you go to tawaf to feel fresh is this a bidah no it's not a bidah but if in the books of fiqh they say before you go to tawaf you should uh, it is recommended or it is highly recommended that you take a tawaf, uh, take a, a shower before tawaf now you are associating bathing with the tawaf and that is when it will become an innovation so that's why the sheikh sheikh al albani he mentions bathing for tawaf he's saying i intend my tawaf my by my tawaf these seven times such and such Okay, so verbalizing the intentions like this and teaching the people that you should do this while you are making tawaf is a bidah. Raising up the hands when touching the black stone as they raise at the beginning of the prayer. This is something that you will also do. We will also see when the people are at the black stone corner, they're raising both of their hands and then kiss and, and raise it again and kiss and, and do it like this many times. Some All of this is from the innovation. The sunnah is to just raise the right hand and say bismillah allahu akbar or just allahu akbar crowding in order to kiss the black stone and preceding the imams saying salam in order to catch the black stone so here's the thing when the people the imam is leading the prayer in the haram you know that uh everybody will be in the prayer so some people before even the imam says the salam they said the salam and they rush to the black stone to kiss all of this is of course first of all this is you've said the salah this will uh, you know, uh, mess up the salat, and on top of that, these are all innovations to push and to shove each other uh, to the women and the men and the harm each other and to go over there as uh, you know, as if you are going to get a trophy when you kiss the black stone. These are all from the innovations of the tawaf and also while the people are there at any time. Saying a special dua when touching the black stone, there is no special dua, so don't make a special dua. If there is no special dua. Placing the right hand over the left hand while making tawaf. Why? Because the Prophet said tawaf is like salah. So they make the tawaf like salah. So say put the right over the left and they make the tawaf like that. This is not allowed. Not sunnah. Saying a special dua at different corners of the Kaaba. Special dua for each circle. This is very common. You will see they will give you this. Some of these people, they give these handouts. It's a full of first tawaf, you do this. Second tawaf, you say this. Third tawaf, you say this. All of these things. A special dua at the door of the Kaaba under the water spout of mercy or the, you know, that gorge. Kissing different corners, doors, and the surroundings of the Kaaba. As we mentioned that touching for tabarruk, for blessings, and kissing all these things are bidah. Okay? Uh, when people do this religiously, this is bidah. Only kissing the stone is the only thing the Prophet did. If it is, can be done, of course, easily. Seeking to perform tawaf when it is raining, claiming that one who does that has all of his previous sins forgiven. Oh, many of these things people say just to encourage people to do what they want to do, what they want them to do. Okay, So always when you hear certain thing, verify. Yes, if it is raining and you're making tawaf, we are supposed, Allah Ta'ala want, Allah Ta'ala will forgive our sins and Allah mentioned that to the Prophet Sassam, of course we are going to do that. But there is nothing like this. Being careful to drench the beard in Zamzam and also their money and their clothes drenched in Zamzam in order to bless them. Is there anything like this? There is nothing like this. What is mentioned in some books of fiqh regarding drinking zamzam in many gulps and each time looking at the Kaaba. And the classical bidah is screaming, you know, these written du'as loudly, bothering others. Sometimes the leader would say, Allahumma, everybody says, Allahumma, taqabbal uh, minna. And all of these things they're saying, sometimes in their own language, sometimes in Arabic. And we have seen that these hujjaj, they go in a group and sometimes they're chatting with each other while they are just repeating what they hear the imam or their imam is saying. And just imagine you are in the 
because nowadays if you go there the they have uh, the bottom floor where the sahan is uh, that is only for the hujjaj and those who come for umrah so it's a very small area already and there's a bunch of these groups different groups everybody is screaming just think about it how the people can focus to make their own dua this is of course has to be taught and unfortunately as i mentioned that sometimes these leaders are the biggest of the corruption okay because they are the ones they keep on the tradition of all of these innovations because they do not want to learn the sunnah and they do not want to implement the sunnah because sunnah is not enough for them so that's why they innovate before i finish i want to show some pictures that is associated with what we discussed uh, last time uh, there are signs for everything in the haram like for example look at this picture it says beginning and completion of tawaf okay so this is where the tawaf starts this is where it ends and then the other picture over there to masa'a meaning it is going towards the sa'i towards safa and marwa so all of these are the signs are there you just have to read it carefully inshallah and as you can see uh, they are also sometimes in different languages um, here the green light is this is one of the uh, signature classics of the the haram the sahan of the haram or in upstairs if you go the green light is an indication that you have reached the black stone corner so sometimes you cannot see the kaaba but these are the ones and sometimes on the floor also there is sign on the floor also there is sign zamzam matter is everywhere so as we mentioned that after the tawaf and praying the two rakat uh, behind Maqam Ibrahim or anywhere in the Haram, we are supposed to drink a lot of zams of water and also put some water on the on our head. Uh, inshallah, ta'ala, in our next session, we are going to start the Sa'i or the Tawaf between the Safa and Marwa. Now, now the Sa'i running between the Safa and Marwa is also called Tawaf because you are circling the place between the Safa and the Marwa. And inshallah, it's a very simple process but it takes time and you should take time and you should not rush it and inshallah we're going to discuss all of that in our next session i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our hajj hajjun mabrur accepted hajj and we come back inshallah ta'ala. all of our hujjahs brothers and sisters come back inshallah ta'ala, as if they are a newborn child subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh